Hey, you're all good. That's fine. <laughs> Jew, uh, that's why people come to the Jews because we have space lasers and we own Correct. all the media. Correct. Own that's the media, it. own the finance, everything. I mean, we own have We're Jews. That's what we do. Hmm. And put fluoride in, in the water as well, apparently. I don't know well, what that's about. you know, you got to do something. That's the good thing about being a Jew. <laughs> so, yeah, this is great. I can see that I can see some little like, you know, Nazi guy in a basement somewhere, you know, that lives with his mother going, but they are Jews. Still? So, oh, his oh, yeah. name Alec Hogg. Not Alec Hogg. What's his name? <laughs> Alec. What's the InfoWars guy? Yeah, well, that oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. The, um, oh, I can't remember the InfoWars guy. I wish I, I wish I could. But I know who you're talking, but he, who you're talking about. You know what's crazy is he, um, he obviously thought the whole Sandy Hook thing was actors. Yes. And I arrived in the U.S. six days before that happened, and I was wow. in that community where it happened. I was in the, I was in 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 Ridgefield and Danby, which is literally down next door to Newtown, and and I used to, I I met those people and I met those mothers, and right. it was it was a deeply, I mean, I didn't have kids that it didn't happen to me, but I I was very, it, it was a very personal thing for me, and they obviously found out where I was from, what I'd been through, you know, we we chatted. And they kept saying to me, what do you think? And I said, look, it doesn't matter what I think. Um, you, you you, guys have just got to keep talking about it. Yeah, but people don't believe us. And I went, it doesn't matter. And then she mentioned this Alec guy, whatever his name was. And I said, well, he's just an idiot. I mean, he is. He hasn't. He's well, he never set foot. He's, he's bankrupt. He's spoken to you. Hmm? Yeah, he's bankrupt. They sued him. Good, because because his crap. I mean, I, I went to a town, like a town hall meeting where these two ladies got up on stage and they were talking about what happened. I just, I was curious. And I went to this town hall meeting and I listened to them talking about their kids and what happened. And it was just so surreal. Th there was the woman, there were two mothers whose children uh, were eight, seven, whatever, being killed by this whack job. And it was extremely real. You, you, you know what? Even if you hadn't read any news newspapers or seen any media and you had all the doubts in the world, there's, there was no denying you could feel the grief in the room. Yeah. It was, and then for this twat just to go, why would he, why would people do that? That was the thing. I thought, what is because, the advantage? Because what is the advantage? It, 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 Americans, for the most part, are twats. And uh, he was making money. But, they hurt. but Steve, the pain these people went through because of that chop. I know. But listen, I mean, if you ever watch his early stuff, and they did a documentary on this guy. Um, they get for people that are just joining. We're talking about Sandy Hook and whatever the guy idiot that kept saying it wasn't real. But they showed all the stuff that he did, like ten or twenty years prior videos and whatever. And it's sort of like he's always been a conspiracy theory kind of guy. But I'm like, when Sandy Hook happened, and he was like, "Oh no, it's not real." I'm like, "Really? That's not real." He, he ten or fifteen dead children. That's not real. They made that up. No, this is why not, would like, they do that? Not that smart. Yeah, he's just an idiot. Listen. All the people that are conspiracy people like him, all the nuts agreed. They buy his products. And it's that's why, because it's like, look, I'm going to save you. Okay, great. Now, um, I know he lost in court. Like they, they got like a few hundred million dollars against him. I know he had to file bankruptcy. I think his info wars is like just dying out. So, hey, before we get any further, should we, want, should we technically start the show? Let's technically start the show. Yeah. <laughs> this is 2OF Entertainment. Well, here we go. It's the man that promises you nothing and delivers. It's the veritable man motor mouth. It's Road Woods who feels the need to call himself Rob Vega. It somehow makes him feel important. Anyway, do have a listen and try not to throw up. I just like the way that does try not to throw up. I, every time it says, I, I don't get it. Well, so, try, you know. try not to throw up. Yes, it, exactly. You know, that's really good that we yeah. use the queen mother and because she's dead or the queen yeah. and she's Very dead. Much so we don't so. have to pay her royalties anymore. That's right? correct. Yes. I'm so, basically just an artificial version or an AI, artificial idiot version of the queen. That's an AI version. I'm not a real yeah. idiot. I'm an artificial idiot. Yeah, you're an artificial <laughs> idiot. That's um, awesome. Steve, um, yeah. I just wanted to wrap something up by saying the whole the whole InfoWars thing, what 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 I yeah. found look, 
you know what? My view is you believe whatever you want to believe. You can think that there are super soldiers and and there are nanobots and the world, right. whatever. I That's one thing. That There it is sitting there on the crazy shelf. Whatever. Fine. Do you, yeah. you do yeah. you. But the, the problem I, I had with the Sandy Hook thing is I met the people who, who suffered. Yeah. I met the mothers. I saw the fathers. Uh, I... I could see the kids whose brothers and sisters had been in there. And it, what I'm saying is if he, if he thought that, if he's going to put it out there, or if you're going to put out any crap out there that is that damaging, get on a damn plane, go there, and actually yeah. pretend to be – actually be the journalist that you're pretending you are yeah. and, and, and all these amazing things that you've discovered because you are – conspiracy theories are by their very nature come from somewhere. So let's right. go there and find the source, research, talk to the people, chat with them. Honestly, if you still, if you come away from meeting, if you'd, if you'd come away from meeting those parents and those people and the whole damn community, Steve, right. they, they were just, they were destroyed. The people were just, man, the sadness was, and you drove past uh, Sandy Hook and you could just, you could, you could feel it. You could feel, you could feel it. And, right. and I just thought, you know, mate, if you could still believe somehow that that was a hoax i would then give you credit for actually doing the work and researching right. and speaking to people if you come away somehow with this with this weird uh, version uh, i'm not going to agree with you and i still think you're right. a, you're a nut job but then i'd have to say look he went there he spoke to the people he went to the school well you can't you can actually go to the school but you can drive past and just feel that talk to the people and but he didn't do any of that he didn't speak to any of them and he calls them all this unspeakable heartache. I mean, imagine yeah. your your kid, your six-year-old kid goes off to school and yeah. you have every right to expect that that beautiful child is going to come home and sure. they never come home. And then you, you, snap on the, you snap on the old YouTube thingy there or the, the TV and he has some twat on the other side of the country telling you, you made it up. You hired Alex people. Jones, by the way, is the twat that we're talking about. And you go, why would you even... Why would you even do that? What right. anyway? I just that, that as I say, I was there, and it 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 was a, a very personal thing for me. I, I obviously didn't, I didn't lose anybody in that tragedy, but I I became friends with with a lot of the people who did. And the, the first time he met them was at the trial, and you could just like the camera would be on his face. First time he met them. The first time he met them. He never really met any of them was at his at the at the lawsuit trial, and they. Were like you, they. I think any of them, if they had a, a weapon, would have just killed them. But they were just yeah. like, "How could you?" It's kind of what you just said. But they're like, "My dad pictures and blah, blah, and you made it up and blah, blah blah." And it was sort of like, yeah, you know, like listen, it's okay to have conspiracy theories, like you know, the lizard people, yeah, that's awesome. body, yeah. you know, having whatever lasers. I mean, that's all true, of course. Uh, and I mean, <laughs> and the banks. This is all true stuff. The Earth is flat. Right, the true, but yeah. you know, going to the moon, yeah, 50 50. Um, yeah. you know, all that other stuff. You know, do we really have a president? Conspiracy, Andy Cooper, all BS, right. yeah, sure, Andy Cooper, right? All that conspiracy, I get it. But <laughs> when something like that, it's, it's true, I, I saw it on the internet. Um, it's when you have Sandy Hook or no, a tragedy it's... like that, and you have some to your point, an idiot that goes, It's not real. Would you like to tell me why the government or these people? The 30 people decide, let's get together. This is going to just be a great April Fool's joke and pretend 30 children died. Like, what moron? That's like the dumbest thing in the world. So to his no credit, it's like if you would have gotten on a plane, got there, saw everything, you would have been like, okay. Then to your point, if he would have said, listen, I still don't believe it. That's fine. You were there. You can say that. But when you're sitting in Austin, Texas, in your studio, selling jars of this is going to keep you alive during you know Armageddon. is he in, is, is he in your town he's in our town yeah oh wow sorry i didn't realize that Kara, get big apologies yeah well someone had told me that. i go like, great all the nuts are here you got rogan musk m you know bullock i don't know it just keeps going on and on and on so here we got steve steve do this i know right <laughs> it's like time to leave so um and I was just, I'm just fascinated by the stupidity, not of, but to his point, the, he's a genius because his stupid, his, his conspiracy crap 
all the stupid people that follow it and believe it and yeah. buy his product. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the stupidity that shocks me yeah, more how? How? than someone Why? believing it. Yeah. But what like like Columbine back in the 80s when those kids killed everybody in Colorado? Oh before we had YouTube and all the other stuff, right? The first big mass shooting that it was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Um, if we if if he was around then he was like, that's not true. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's not true. Like the, when they have the people do these mass shootings all the time, it's like, it, it's just not true. I'm like, you got it. Like enough with the not true. We live in a society now where people are literally loony because there's no value. There's no hope. There's no nothing. So they're like, okay, they just snap one day or they've been playing video games for so long. They're just like, let's see what it is in real life. But I know on the last shooting that happened a month ago, they're holding the parents for involuntary manslaughter because one, they bought him his, his weapon, and two, they did, didn't they? yeah, they bought yeah. him the weapon, and two, they something else happened. Like the parents, like they were saying, "I'm just going to go to school today and kill everybody." And mom and dad are like, oh, "Have a good day." But, so, but Steve, explain explain something. Yeah. I, I kind of know this, but this is just for anybody else. Explain sure. to me how old was that kid? Uh, you mentioned the parents bought him a gun. How fourteen or 15? 14 or fifteen? Right. Explain to me the conversation that you have with your 14 year old son. And let's be honest, okay. we've all been crazy ass 14 year old. You sure. have, I have 14. I mean, you don't know. I mean, I barely know what's going on now. 14, right. I mean, absolutely right. jack. Okay. And can you imagine your, your mother and father going, you know what? You know what's really going to help you and get you get you on the path to adulthood and yeah. figure shit out. We're going to buy you a. We're going to buy you a gun. What was it? Was it an AR-14? Was it one of those? Yeah, like bottom, a, bottom a rifle. Yeah, uh, uh, like bottom a, a rifle. Like Let's a weapon buy that we go to a rifle. Yeah. That yeah. should yeah. should really that should really bring him into the adult fold. And 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 yeah. and once he's I don't know done whatever it is he's going to do with this rifle, then yeah. it'll all be okay. He'll be yeah. settled. He'll be a man. He'll be like like Roger Kipling's F. You know, if you do this, if you do this, yeah. and then there, right there in the middle, it says, and if you take Why this gun and com me. commit unspeakable acts, then yeah. you'll be a man, my son. I mean, yeah. what other, why, why would you do that? Why would you, so, I mean, look, I, he's I, obviously I, great. Why would the parents, 14 yeah. years old, you don't know shit, but the parents, they're our age. Well, either, apparently. Apparently. Why, why would you do that? Have a coffee with your son. Don't buy him a freaking gun. Right. Yeah, one. Listen, do what do what most good parents do. Give him some cocaine and let him just enjoy the day. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let him sweet. enjoy. Give him some hallucinogenics and let him see pink elephants and shit. So get him a new I game. Get him a new video game. Get him Call of Duty or something. Why would you buy him an actual you gun? You know what he needs? He needs another video game, Call of Duty number 26, because that's you know, you need that. But here's how I look at this. When I was a kid. My my dad had a weapon, and on Saturdays we would go to the range, and I got to shoot and whatever. And I think it was after my bar mitzvah. I was like, "Ooh, it'd be really cool if I had a weapon because I want my own. Like, right, I wanted to rifle and shoot and blah blah." And my mom and dad were like, "That's very nice, uh, but no." And I said, and I went through all the things like you can put a gun lock on it, and you can do this, and you can do that. Like my dad kept oh. his his his. He had a a, a Luger, a twenty two Luger, which is the coolest thing. But I mean, like when he came home. From the range, the clip came out, the everything came out. He took it literally apart and stuck it in the safe that only he had the combo for. Like, so no one was getting it. And my mom was like, So, what are you going to do with this rifle? I said, Well, when we go to the range, I'm going to shoot. And she's like, Can you rent one at the range? I'm like, Yeah. And it was a Marlin Glenfield. I think I wanted a 22. And she was like, Then that's where, and you'll continue. And I was like, But you can put a lock and you can do this and you can do that. But, but and my dad said, Well, that's all good, but it's just too big to fit in the safe. But enough said. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm good. And I and but you know, it was under like when we would go to the range, I'd go with my dad on a Saturday. It was fun, something to do, like pop, 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 you know. Um, but you, I don't get yeah. it where I understand children go hunting. I think it's 10 or 8 or whatever. They, they can go hunting with their parents, and I get that. But if I have a kid and we like to go hunting, and I don't understand hunting, so I can't really say I would do that because you know, going up against Bambi with with a like a 30 odd. And taking Bambi's head exactly off, sort of like, yeah. I don't get it. Now, if you want to go up against a grizzly bear with a pocket knife, I'm all for that because now it's a competition. But, you know, to go after Bambi with a, a gun just doesn't seem like anything unless Bambi's shooting back. And now a, a bow and arrow, maybe a little more, but not a gun. But anyway, if I was going to have a son, he said, I want to go be a hunter. 
Cool. So we would get a gun safe. And if we're going to keep it in the house, Junior doesn't get to know the combo. All the guns or weapons go in there. All the Everything goes in there. And you have to teach him weapon safety. But I wouldn't be like, here, go hang your AR, whatever the kid had in your room and go, isn't that nice? No, it's not. And I think parents, I'm, I'm, I'm vacillating on how I feel about the parents being held for involuntary manslaughter. But I think it does send a message that if you're going to buy your child a lethal weapon, then what do you think you're going to do with, with it? it? That's it. Yeah. What, 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 hunt, what, if, if you're a hunter, sure. But, you know, you're taking it to school for show and tell. I have a problem with that. Steve, I mean, what it's it's like um, you buy your you, – okay, let's let's make it um, – let's go with this. It's like saying, all right, my, you know, my 13-year-old son, he wants his independence. What 13-year-old boy doesn't? Yeah, I'm a – you know, as you said, you, you found every excuse. That's – I mean, I'm, I obviously blame the kid, but not he, – he's still a kid. This yeah. is why we have adults and kids, and this is why we try juveniles and adults right. and whatever, because we're still growing up. We're still, right. we're still getting there. So this is why we have parents and children. I'm just right. putting it out there. You need someone to guide you. Yeah. And uh, buying someone a gun for <laughs> buying something like that particularly is, right. is it's, it's like saying to your son, you want to go out, you want to have fun, you know, I don't really have the time. What are you, 12 now, 13? Yeah, take the pickup. Right. Now, what do you think? Now, but here's the thing. What is he going to do with it? He's going to drive it. He's Correct. not trained. He's not trained. He has zero experience. He doesn't really know what could happen. He doesn't have the idea of consequence or repercussions. Maybe he's a big lad. Maybe he can fit and his legs can reach the gas and so on. Sure, fine. That was my, what my dad said. He's the moment you can reach the gas pedals, and I'll teach you to drive. And I was... Right. I was 25. No, I'm kidding. I, I was. I was. <laughs> but, but that was last week. So. Yeah, exactly. But let's say, um, you know, you, you you have to understand that if you buy something for your kids, like a car or a gun, right. they're going to do whatever that thing does. Right. You can't. I mean, what did what did they think? Here, yeah, son, have a gun. Have a nice life. Have a good day, without any supervision, and off he goes. And yeah. and. I agree with you. I'm, I, I, I heard that. When I heard they were charging the parents, I thought, well, oh, that's a bit rough. Hang on a second. Who bought him the gun? Would he have right. been able to get the gun without them? Number one. So how did he access the gun? Where did he get the idea to get a gun? Right. Who that raised him? Either way. That could go either way. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just, yeah. Yeah. but that's what I happens when you, when you sign the parent contract, you yeah. are responsible for that that person. Nobody's Absolutely. a parent. I don't know if you, I mean, maybe in South Africa, it's a little different because your guys are still allowed to beat your children and, you know, until their attitudes change, which I only on like, Saturdays. Oh, see, and I, I, in America, it's not on the way that ends with a Y. Yeah, Monday through Friday, you can't beat them. So, but you, see, at least yeah, you get to beat you them. You can only slap them, you can't beat them. It's still okay, well, slapping is still good. Here, you can't do anything to your child. When I was a kid, if I spoke back to my mom or dad, or grandparents, or any adult, they would just slap you across your face. I know, right? They're like, you want something to cry about? I'll give you something to cry about. So today, when kids talk back, you can't you, you can't punish them because, I, like one of my friends' kids said to them, I'm going to call like social services on you. And he's an old school New Yorker like I am. And he said, to, he, picked, he gave him his cell phone. He goes, dial it. Do it. And he goes, and I go, and, and, he's, and he said, we'll just get another one of you. And I was like, there you go. And the kid like straightened right up because I goes, you know, because uh, my joke with him is, you know, you're 13 years old. Your parents don't really love you that much. They don't really know you. Like if you, anything happened to you, they can just make another. And he literally used that line. His kid just looked at him like, this isn't, this isn't going the way I thought. And it was but sort Steve, of like, yeah, there you go. But Steve, this is not new. I mean, you mentioned yeah. 13. I mean, uh, there's the old quote about Mark Twain. You know, when he was 14, he said, my dad was an idiot, a yeah. total idiot. And by the time I reached 19, I was amazed how much he had learned. <laughs> there you go. So this is not but a new problem. Are, but right, it's not a new parents problem. don't parent. They parent less now because of all the technology. Um, you know, kids are yeah, in the room. You can't be your kid's friend. This well, crap. That's true. This is, I agree with that. Like, I, I don't, don't ask. Thing. If I have a child, I don't ask them, what do you he want? He doesn't want a friend. What are doing for dinner? Yeah, there's he doesn't want a friend. You're, you're a biological life form. Yeah, you're not his friend. You, you, you just you basically have no thought because the thoughts you have are just stupid. And when you're 20 something years old, 
maybe you're you're an adult. But I mean, in between zero and 20, when you get out of university, you are my, are my problem. So you do what you're told. And if I want to have an intellectual dialogue with you, we will try. And if it doesn't work, then uh, we have to beat you. And it's just the way it works. No, I'm just kidding about the beatings. Or am I? What are you this looking for? Are you trying to think if it's Saturday so you can beat your child again? No, 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 I'm looking to see if I've got my favorite book here. No, I think I've lent. Oh, here it is. Uh-oh. This is going to be good. This is the Satanic Guide to Making Money. No. So, <laughs> hold on. We'll do a whatchamacallit. Let's do this close up. Raising Boys. Uh, that's like, yeah. You know, can I tell you something? A lot of the priests in the Catholic Church reads that book, too. So um, it's very exciting. <laughs> now, the, the thing, well... There, there's some things I agree with and some things I don't. But the one thing that is, is is quite interesting, and I saw it come up on some newscast recently where they've said, oh, everything, your your relationship with money is formed by the time you're six. And I went, well, that's interesting because in here and some of the psychology books that I studied when I actually did my degree, I know it's surprising. I do have a degree. Um, you're done. You're done yeah. by seven. That's it. Really? You're done. Yeah. You're done. By the time okay. you're seven, all the bits, the psycho, psycho bits are all formed. Then you're just developing context and perspective. Gotcha. But okay. done. Whatever person you're going to be is kind of done by the time you're seven. Uh, there's a little bit of little bit of wiggle room, but practice. So the thing, the thing that they they say is you want to start being a parent from the time that child is a baby. You don't start the crap when they are starting to put uh, sentences together and articulating right. why they feel this way about a presidential candidate. Because that's going to yeah, happen when about their feelings. Too late. It's too right. late. You've got to have, you've got to, you, you walk your, you walk your kids out there into the world. Right. You, you with them for those. After seven, whatever, right. whatever happens after seven is not really up to you. Well, it is up to you, but they're done. And, and the reason, and this is just a theory. This is not a reason. This is a theory. I, I think why we're having a lot of trouble with parents is they step into the ring too late. By the time yeah. they, like particularly guys, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna be patronizing it. We got uh, when the kid's not doing all that stuff, and when they can start, when I can throw them a ball and stuff, and then yeah. I'll get involved. It's too late. The kid has really formed his opinion. He's got his view of the world, and it's done. So um, I guess. We, we come to the party too late. And at that point, if you start imposing discipline and the things you should have done already, right. you, the, the theory is that now you, you could be, you could be impacting the child in some way because now you, 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 it's too late, Steve, right. you, you, you're trying to direct their behavior um, when they're seven, eight, nine, and it's too late. Right. You, you, you lay the groundwork. And after that, they will be the fruit of whatever you've done. Right. So well, there will be fruits. So yeah. it will. It could be fruits. It could it, be. I don't know. Low hanging. Low hanging. Yeah. Low hanging. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Yes, I got it. <laughs> no, I don't know. Look, I mean, everybody's got a stupid theory about parenting. I, 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 don't I will think say I this though. When I, when yeah. I was growing up, my yep. grandparents and mom and dad, and both grandparents, my my grandma, grandpa, nana, and pop, and because we all live close, everybody was involved from the minute I came out until everybody moved away when I was in my teens. And mm -hmm. I think that had a lot to do with yeah. discipline and everything. So whether I was an embryo or I was two or three or four, there was still like, no, don't do this, don't do that. So by the time I was a little gentleman, as my grandfather would say, and be going to dinner at eight years old in a little suit with a little pocket square and ordering dinner for the ladies at the table, my formative years if you will were formed and there exactly. was discipline and I that's think, exactly what i'm saying yes i agree with you and i think it translates also into business because i saw everybody you you know i come i always joke with people i'm i'm a stupid new yorker with a northeastern mentality whether you're a white collar or a blue collar whether you have one dollar or a billion dollars my mentality and i was raised you work until you die and you don't really work you find something you love and that's what you do and today, when you talk to people, it's like, well, I want to come in around 10. I want to leave at three because I have to have work life, work life, nothing. And that's because your parents are pussies. You're a pussy. That's it. I come and I like old stock. Um, there's a, a company we're doing some work for. And I said to them, what are you hiring? And they told me, I go, this is the problem. You're hiring a bunch of pussies. You're hiring people that have no 
infrastructure, no foundation. They all think, you know, they're going to be, you know, working six hours a week. And that's how you build a multi-billion dollar company. I and literally, if you don't work 80 to 100 hours a week, you're not building squat. Let's just be honest. And these kids come in and go, but I no, there's no thing. You know what? Go work it up as a barista. But this is the, the thing. Problem. But but Steve, just to without okay, so that's the grumpy complaining part. Now I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna rotate it around and say, so how do we how do we because you know we guys we've got to fix stuff. How do we fix that? What is what is the what is the so that's the uh, diagnosis. Now we've got to find the prognosis and the possible solution. And what I what I would say is, I mean, not everybody's like that. A lot are, but I come across uh, people, even young folk, that are not like that. And I all when you say young, folk, really I got to look at the parents. <laughs> no, I look at the parents. I look at the parents. Okay, and you'll find very often the person who's got that great work ethic, who is, mm -hmm. I guess, a bit like you and I, the old school thing, whatever. Yeah. They, the, you look at the parents, and you realize. There was no, there was no debate yes. growing up. There was no debate, yeah. but that, that from two, one, yeah. two, three, yeah. when they were starting to understand words, not when they eight, nine, ten, because then it's right. too late, right. is what I'm trying to say. People step into the ring too late, mm -hmm. and then you're now dealing with an alien life form. It, it, yeah. it has its own independence, and it's the middle culture, social services, and not that oh. I'm agreeing with the kid, but at that point. Yeah, you probably should because you and your dad don't actually, you haven't, there's no shared Bond. value. It's there's too no late. Yeah. It's too late. And it, you shouldn't be surprised. You shouldn't be surprised if your kid starts doing their thing mm -hmm. and, and rejecting you because you've come to the party too late. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, and I'm, I'm going to be smug about this, I have screwed up most things in my life. But when it comes to my son, for instance, I will say I was there. And yes, look at me. Woo, woo, woo. I was there from day one, probably because I had. Thank you very much. I was. In fact, I was there even before day one. I just said you were there. Helped. You were there. That's another reality show entirely. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. But, but the thing is, um, you know, my background. I didn't really have a dad, and it, right. circumstances. It's whatever it was. It wasn't his fault. Family split up. Whatever. And I right. always said when my son came along, or my daughter, same thing. I would be there from day one, and we would, we would. Not friends. They needed to know I was there, and I was that way, and I was that way on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every single day. There was no, there was no wiggle room with how the discipline worked. Yeah. And the funny thing is, um, I would say the first couple of years were challenging for me. It was fine for them. We didn't have the terrible twos. We didn't have the crazy threes, whatever they call them, the fearsome fours, the fabulous fives, whatever it is. And we would go to restaurants. And no, my kids weren't the ones peering over the side. They weren't the ones throwing a tantrum in the shopping mall right. because they knew, they knew I was yeah. there. Oh yeah. And and I would I would say it's as simple as this: if your kids know you're there, but I mean they really know, and they know from the time they two, one, yeah. not even walking. If you're not actually there, acknowledging them, listening to them, you don't have you don't have to wave magic wands. You don't have to be the dad of the year you just have to be present and they need to know you there that's all that really yeah. that's it and you need to want to be there as well that's also important i want to be a dad i want to be there not to be on some hallmark thing oh look i'm such a great dad and we all have yeah. hugs. no it's not that they just need to know you're there they have their little thing and they look across and they see dad and they go okay i'm cool or if you're not there if you're not there steve yeah. for many years up until seven eight nine then they go, okay, well, i got to find my own path now. It just works in their mind. And then they become that person who comes to your office and says, I don't know if I want to come in before 10. Because no one, they don't know, Steve. They haven't seen what's, who's their role model. What are they based on? But the interesting on thing is, right, but the interesting thing about what you just said is I never acted up either. And friends of mine that grew up in New York with, when they raised their children didn't act up because – it was like no phone, no. It was like you discipline, discipline, discipline. Like they can sit at a table with the, the adults. They can do this. They can have a dialogue. They can do all of that um, and and whatever. When I go to a restaurant, and I'm talking like a nice restaurant where you have to dress, and I see some little kid with an iPad, and I'm thinking, I, I'm glad you're bringing your kid here to learn how to you know, do this. But you, when they're 13 or they're 23 or whatever, they can't bring an iPad and watch like a movie. 
that's blaring, by the way, not a headphone, but blaring for the whole restaurant to hear. Like at some oh. point, and it's like, I've literally asked my table to be moved. And I remember like some waiter gave me a look and I, and, he, and, he, and the manager is like, what's the problem? And I said, listen, I have no problem sitting next to a child. I do have a problem. I don't want to watch a movie while I'm eating and trying to talk to people because the thing is so loud. I said, well, let's assume, and I, cause you know, I'm, I'm friendly. I said, you won't have the balls to tell them to turn it down. And I said, it's not my restaurant, so just move me. And we moved. And my people were with me, why do you say something? I said, it's not my place to tell them how to raise their child in a restaurant and embarrass them because they were the group of people. I said, they can move my table because that's easier instead of me going, hey, asshole, curb your kid. So no, like a problem is, is parents today are not parents. Parents today are, I don't know what the hell they are. They're those so sperm receptacles. And so here's saying. the solution. This is yeah. what I'm saying. Here's sure. what I, I believe is a possible oh. solution. Yeah. And it actually speaks to leaderships, presidents, yeah. everything. It's the whole the whole thing. Um, I came across something recently. I think my wife pointed this out to me. Uh, in Japan, right? They, I mean, a, a lot of places around the world, they teach their kids maths, geography, all these silly <laughs> things. But uh, apparently, and and I'm. Full disclosure, I haven't actually Googled this. I just trusted my wife knew what she was talking oh, about. This is going to be good. <laughs> yeah. but, it, but what she said made sense. Apparently, um, I believe, I'm, yeah. I'm led to believe yeah. that in Japan, they um, the kids are taught about, for example, nutrition. They teach yes. the kids nutrition. They teach them how proteins and things work and, and their little games and things they do. And each school, allegedly, because I haven't mm -hmm. Googled it. I mean, hopefully it's true. The the district, schools, whatever, they have to have a nutritionist who, who is trained to make proper meals for the kids. Right. And my wife said there was a, sh a picture of one of these uh, uh, classes, the, 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 the kids in Japan. Mm -hmm. And none of the kids, there must have been 9, 10, none of them. No overweight kids, all in shape, mm -hmm. all happy, but all knew about nutrition. Right. What to put in here, what what things did what to our body. Now, uh, what I'm saying is, I, it impressed me because I thought this is this is something that people don't teach the kids. This right. is why we have people with eating disorders. This is why they'll go online and they, they'll watch crap about nutrition and they'll come to your office and say, oh, this is good for you, that's bad for you. They really don't know. Right. They, they have no clue. They've never had training. Now, you can blame them or not blame them, but the truth is when they went to school, there was no training about nutrition. In Japan, there is. Now, I'm well, saying getting back to why aren't they good parents? Because right, right. when you're at school, no one teaches you how to be a parent. No one taught me how to be a parent. I'm right. sitting out saying, oh, things went well with me. But there were issues between me and my kids, which I could have, I, I've had to learn on the job. What would have been helpful is that if when I went to a place of education, of learning, I mean, why are you going to school? I mean, a lot of the things that you learn, you never use anyway. Right. But what they were doing is they're giving you they're giving you subjects, material, things that you know you have got to learn to understand a workload, exams. You've got to there's a work ethic. You've often heard people say, "What I've learned in school, I don't use in in the office." That's not the point. The point is you've got to be trainable. You've got to learn how to train, foundation. how to work, how, yeah. foundation. So yeah. I'm saying, in amongst all the garbage that you are that you learn. Algebra, seriously? Okay, we'll put that in there. But how about something about how to be a parent? How I to, have, wait, wait, how I to, have something. Now, but I'm saying, hang on, hang on. Yeah. So you become a parent, so you right. learn that. You learn that. Maybe right. some practical courses. Wait, you they can used walk. to have classes like that. Oh, no, they but hang used on. to. But then, uh, and in addition to that, yeah. people say, why are, they, why are politics so screwed up? Why have we got no leaders? When do you learn how to be a leader in school? When do you learn? I mean, really. And I don't mean just the guys that get selected to become prefects. I was right. a prefect at school, and there were certain little classes we took. But generally, there was no mm -hmm. training. I went to a fancy school where yeah. there was some, where there were, we had like a, like a, um, this was interesting. We had a class, and it was only for yeah. one year, yeah. where you, you had to, you learned about your partner, who you would choose to marry or spent, and that's weird, but I, we were yeah. 16, what we learned about, and our headmaster used to take the class, and he said, this is probably one of the most important decisions you, you're ever going to make. And right. it stuck with me because I thought, that is true. You yeah. choose the wrong partner, and your life 
can be crazy. Crap, you choose yeah. the right partner and things go, will go better for you. Now, partner, nutrition, leadership, how to be a parent. These are all things which should almost be mandatory. You should teach. Nobody knows this in your, how do you know how to be a father from your father? What if you didn't have one? What if you're, I don't know, or you're, or all you heard about your father was what your crazy mother who right. fought with your father told you, and I, he was on. Yeah, I think if you just watch the training. bird cage and you just look at Nathan Lane, I think that's the perfect father for anybody. Perfect. Um, but let me just say, is that this. With the club in Florida is that with the club in Florida? And Robin Williams, club. yes, Nathan Lane is the. I love player. that movie. So I Robin Williams you, and Nathan Lane. It was brilliant. Yeah, it was brilliant. Now yeah. I will tell you, your wife was a correct. Father, kudos, really? Kudos, kudos, yeah, kudos. Yeah, I, I don't think Nathan Lane would be the father. perfect father for anybody. Anyway, here's what it says. Yes, Japanese schools teach nutritional facts through a philosophy called. I think that means Godzilla is going to eat you, which means food education is a key part of the Japanese school lunch program, which includes nutritional education. Students learn about nutrition value um, of their food and why certain nutritions are important. School lunches, students receive a nutritious lunch prepared by a certified nutritionist serving in there we the go. students' often school lunch classrooms. Of clean, wait, wait, here's the best. Serving and eating, yeah. students often serve each other lunch and clean up after themselves. That'll never happen in the States. Local produce. Students learn about local and seasonal produce and how to cook it. Done. Schools yeah. run um, living textbooks. School runs of uh, teaching children, yada, yada, yada. There's a whole thing on this. And then here's what they okay. get to learn in class. Mathematics, music, art, a foreign language, Japanese language, home economics, physical ed, and home economics to be children or cooking, physical ed, science, social studies, which we don't do anymore, character education, which I like, crafting Ooh. in English. So there you go. So we, you want to know why China, Japan, and Korea kick our asses? There you are, kids, because they actually teach their kids something. Our kids in America learn nothing about anything. They're useless as tits on a bull. Um, and it's it, it, what? Bulls can't have tits. Um, and if it was up to me, you said, what would I do? Because we know what the problem is. I would literally implode the planet, which is what we're doing here at the lizard people um, the Illuminati Club, and start over. And I would bring more intelligent homo sapiens on the planet, and we would just start but, from the beginning. But that's all very dark. Um, and That was not dark. Kids have bulls. I thought that was very light. It was very good. I, I don't okay. disagree with it at all. But I'm right. saying, right. Um, putting a... Uh, um, I always like to see if we can find something. I, I don't so know. How about we teach? We go back to old school teaching, and like we pay teachers money so they don't have to struggle and we let the teachers have discipline in the classrooms and we teach the children the proper education. I love the Japan education system. They go to school 11 and a half months out of a year. Little brats don't they need to be off for the summer. They need to be being taught. The problem, Steve, the problem, Steve, uh, and, and it is a problem. I don't disagree, but what was that song called? Who let the dogs out? Well, this is what's happened. The, the dogs are out. And yeah, yeah. how do you get them back in? You can't get them back in. They're out there. So now you've got to manage that lack of discipline. But and I, there is your challenge. They're I, out. I, I can, They're uh, the wokeism. Out. Remember the wokeism a few years ago? Everyone was woke and politically correct and all that bullshit. The Wall Street Journal. There are. Article they? article that, well, there, who cares? The Wall Street Journal said that it's going away. People now are kind of fed up with wokeism and politically correctness. They were, like, people are like, enough of this BS. Let's get back to the reality of it. So who let the dogs out? Hey, guess what? I'm the adult. The dogs are coming back. This is what your school is going to be like. And if you don't like your kid in school 11 months out of the year, go send them to some shit school. And then he can then do whatever. And if you want your kid to learn and move ahead, send him to a public school that actually teaches. But the public schools and the counties have to start paying their teachers six figures whether you're kindergarten all the way to 12th grade, you have to start paying the teachers real money, not this ridiculous, here's $33,000 a year and ask Johnny to bring a pencil. When I was a kid, we brought nothing to school except us mm -hmm. and the school gave you everything. We, so, we have, a, we have a, an interesting problem here as well. Speaking yeah. of teachers, yeah. um, they've, they're running out of an education budget. Yet government ministers are and are ordering themselves fancy German cars to drive around it. So 
problem is, is you got politicians running yeah. that, and there is the problem. It's yeah. like uh, politicians ran the pandemic. That worked mm -hmm. out great. It did and it, good. Yeah. It, it, it worked out great. Now, I just wanted to say something. You mentioned about getting all these ill-disciplined people back in the shed and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Steve, we, we couldn't even explain to people how, and I'm not going to call it a vaccine. I'm going to call it a preventative measure <laughs> that people that people were trying. I mean, my daughter's in the sciences, and she had a professor who was yeah. working on a, I'm not even going to say the word. It starts with a V. It's now a swear word. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, by the way, measles is coming back. Are you are you kidding me? It's coming back because right. people go, my body, my choice. Okay. Oh, yeah. So what I'm saying is you're dealing with that mindset where people, I've got, I've got friends who are under the, under the illusion that the medical community is out to kill them. I mean that that well, that's true. Okay. whatever <laughs> whatever you think what you want if that's what you yeah. think people grow up they go I want to be a doctor I want to kill yeah. people I want to be a epidemiologist I want to come up with stuff that's going to run around yeah. in their veins and then I can just use my phone grab an app and just turn them off if you want to believe Bill Gates. that sure <laughs> But what I'm it's saying with the is, Jewish space I'm telling you, it's with. with our Jewish space lasers. So. But Steve, your yeah. your theory is sound. The practice of getting all these all these dogs yeah. back in the shed. I mean, yeah. forget about it. What is it? Forget yeah. about it. Forget about it. <laughs> it's not going to happen. How do you? It, it, I don't know. It's it a challenge. It, it's it's just interesting that we have become a society of idiots. And we we did a show last week with a gentleman named Michael Collins on Lost Dollar Business Club. And we were talking about most favored nation in China. And we're talking about what it means to be like an American and what that meant like in the thirties, forties and fifties and sixties. And from like the seventies and eighties and by the nineties, it was gone. Um, but also intelligent people were gone. I mean, like all of a sudden people have just that is so mindless sad. drones. It really, it's like all of a sudden, like oh, we have all this technology and there's only a handful of people that read a handful of people that think, and the rest of the people are just like little drones. And I'm like, you know what? You know what's crazy is you saying that has actually brought me back. I've I've ri written it down. This is actually what I wanted to even talk about was this idea. Yeah. Um, as I've said many times before, um, yeah. my friend who he, he was a radio jock in in Norman, Oklahoma, um, yeah. Sham. He actually passed away about two years ago. Um, but he always used to tell me, and I'm going to do it. He says, "Hey, hey, roll." You're like an American with a foreign accent. Um, I, I think if the history of America, some of the best and the brightest got over there, escaped tyranny. I mean, the Constitution is a, is a work of yeah. that have developed amazing things, put men on the moon, all these things, incredible people. Unfortunately, their grandchildren are now running things yeah. and it's you sitting with a bunch of people i'm not casting aspersions on who they are because it's not true of everyone this is not right. a blanket yeah. thing but i do think it's it, when you have a guy who does well he builds a business which just for the sake of whatever a man and a woman build a business mm -hmm. and they and they're great they come from poverty so they come from europe all the tyranny you'll see my analogy they come from that and they go we're gonna right. build something amazing because we right. came from that are we going to do better? And they did, and they became this rich, amazing, incredible thing. And their kids were idiots. Right. And therein lies the problem because it's not that the kids are idiots, but the, the parents do so well. You've seen these rich people that do so mm -hmm. well, they put something from nothing, and they go, I want to spare my kids all of my heartache. But you say, But right. the heartache. The difficulty is why yeah. you did, why you're so amazing. You actually yeah. deny your children. They need a bit of that pain. No, they, they mustn't go. I want to spare them all that. And I feel sometimes, and bear in mind, I'm not generalizing about the whole country. I think it's an, I still think it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's not a country. It's an idea. I look at it that way. It's 50 different. Yeah. There's so many different people. I can't say one country, right. but. And he's stuck. <laughs> well, I'm assuming he'll be back. If he's not back, there you go. You were gone for a second. So we're one country and then you got stuck. Okay. So what's happened is you've got 
this incredible i mean it is steve i mean i know you joke about it and you can you've grown up there and you live there and i've come along and seen it and know about it right. and it, it it's extraordinary what's been done i mean it's amazing there, there's some it, it's an extraordinary place and there's some extraordinary people that have done extraordinary things that's just a fact um in the arts and construction whatever you can't it is there for all to see mm -hmm. but i sometimes think what you have now in a lot of areas is you have the kids mm -hmm. that didn't build any of this they don't right. have they don't have that you said america died or whatever in the 90s that whole spirit yeah. disappeared okay i i can't i can't judge that but i do think there's been a changing of the guard the people that built stuff, that created things, that did things, I'm sure they're around, but right. their parents built everything, so they don't have to create anything. It's there. It's done. It's finished. Um, a lot of those people probably moved to other parts of the world, so they can yep. go and build things there. But I do think it, it's – it, I almost think sometimes the country uh, is – it's almost like a victim of its own success. It's got all these incredible so, – so – as bad as things can be, and I, I don't want to patronize anybody, but I, you live there. I've been there. There are some folks that are, are struggling. There is a world economic downturn that is not just affecting America. I just want to put that, right. by the way. It's a global thing, so, yes. But so I will tell you. No one, this, sorry, no, one is, no one is minimizing the pain that people are right. feeling. No, no, um, not at all. But, you know, you talk about kids and, and discipline. I heard a story about one of your favorite people, Anab. And Arnold Schwarzenegger said, I forget if he did this with his son or his daughter, mm -hmm. but um, they didn't make their bed one morning and they were going to let the maid make the bed. And when he heard that, he went Arnold. upstairs. Uh, this is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold, the, and Arnold went upstairs to their, I forget if it was the son or the daughter, to their bedroom, took their bed, their mattress, and flung it out the window. Oh, into the lawn and said, now go get it, go upstairs and make your bed. And I'm thinking to myself, can I do it? Can I do it? Yes. Oh, please. That's parenting. You've got to get down there. Go and get your bed. Bring it up. You've got to make your own bed. No, no, don't get anybody to help you. Come on, go, you little girly man. I don't know. And that is why his children are disciplined because when your dad takes your bed. Grab the bed huh? from outside oh my god he literally took their bed flung it out the window and i and not only he told it but i thought his daughter told the story and so i'm not it happened to her or the brother but she said wow. yeah we thought the maid was going to make the bed one day and said oh the maid will make the bed and my dad was like oh that's not happening and literally took it and threw the mattress out the window and said now make the bed like go mm -hmm. get it and drag it up and, make, and i was like wow yeah, the way that's you sleep outside you're going to sleep yeah. on the lawn. Go, oh, go. Yeah. So, you know, and then, you know, no, just his accent alone. I mean, when you're his kid, it's not funny. But if he did that and you were like with him, you'd be like, that's funny. So, you know, it's one of those things. But I heard that. I thought that, okay. But see, if you do that today, kids would be like, I'm going to call. No, call whoever you want. Go, go live, go live in social services. See what that's like living with a hundred people. You know, so it really, it really, it really is a shame that some you, of the old can, world values aren't there. You do want to protect kids from abuse. Let's just be clear. I agree with that. Right. But throwing that, your mattress out no the window is not abuse. That's just if, 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 if discipline turns into abuse where you literally that's different. punch your children, that is yeah, but if you smack your on the bottom. I'm, like, I'm, I'm saying, kids. Steve, yeah. to my original point, I'm saying, and and people can argue, and that's fine. That's what right. that's that's great. That's why we chat. I would say. In many instances, if you are there for your kids from, and it's hard work, it's time. If you are there for them, really there for them, not phoning from a conference on the other side of the country. Oh, right. sorry, I didn't miss that. Um, if you're there for them, it's not a cliche. You need to be at that that kid's concert. Yeah. You need yeah. to be at the ball game. Not, yep. not for a photo op, but your kid needs to see you there. They need to know they can count on you because you if they can the count parent. on you, you don't even have to say anything. You can just sit there and yeah. be present because they yeah. look across the room and they go, dad's there. I'm okay. Because when the shit hits the fan, I can go and yeah. talk to him. Yeah. And what he says, there must be some, it must be credible. Or, or, or right. they will attack. You go, oh, well, he was always there. He cares. Yeah. But if yeah. they don't have that, yeah. they don't have that. 
And then the kid gets older and starts becoming rebellious. Right. And the relationship with the father then becomes potentially abusive. That is a whole nother story. But yeah, I'm saying, I'm, not saying, I'm, I'm saying you're not, you're going to have less. I would argue, there's probably some exceptions, but I would argue you're going to have less rebelliousness, less trouble yeah. if you've actually been a parent for those first seven, eight years. I agree. I, I, agree. I think you'll have less trouble. I'm not saying you won't have any trouble. You might. Right. I mean, you right. know, hormones, mm -hmm. life, right. the internet. Instagram, whatever, these these okay. things, whatever. But then your kids, I'm looking at my kids, and I can only reference my kids. They're out there. They, they're now 23 and 27. They went through all of the social media thing, the YouTube thing, the Instagram thing. And so it's there. You can't take away the reality of it. But they could see it for what it is. They didn't right. look to it for comfort, for guidance, for information, for connection to people. It was just a tool. Social media, all by itself, as a little thing that sits on the shelf is fine. But when you start looking to it for, for meaning, for life purpose, for acceptance, that's when, and then that, that leaves you open to all these suggestions about your parents should be doing this and you should be doing that and you should be doing that. And your mind just goes on an absolute tangent and you have no idea who you are. Your dad walks in the room and says, turn that off. And you go, no, I'm turning it off. Because this is your, this is your lifeblood. This is yeah. your connection okay. to reality, which you but, didn't get but, from your dad. But here's the difference. I'm not saying when you spank your kid or like, to be abusive. Well, if I was bad, I'd get either a slap on the face or a spank on the butt. It wasn't like a continuous whatever. Now, when I swore when I was younger, my mom would get the brown soap out and you'd have to do the mouth of soap, which was like, wow. And you learn not to swear. And then being from New York, it's very difficult. But uh, you know, exactly. <laughs> In fact, let me tell you how difficult it is. When I was at university, I was with a friend in Brooklyn, and, and they were talking about, you know, islands. And they were talking about these Falkland Islands. And the, and the teacher was talking about the Falkland Islands. And my friend, it goes, you know, when they invaded the Falkland Islands. And my friend goes, what Falkland Islands? He goes, there's the Hawaiian Falkland Islands, the Canary Falkland Islands. And I'm like, no, the <laughs> Falkland Islands. He goes, the Falkland Islands. He says, got the well, Hawaiian. He goes to, I'm like, no, no, no. I said, we'll explain it to you later. So, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's just misconstrued. But yeah, but I got the soap in the mouth. If I was bad, I got the smack on the bum. Um, I never got smacked in the face. I always got smacked on my bum. Um, my mom once chased me around the dining room table with a wiffle ball bat because I was bad yeah. and she couldn't catch me. And oh, she, a, she, oh, a wiffle. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a plastic wiffle ball bat. Yeah. And I knew it wouldn't hurt if she hit me. And, my, and she goes, never mind. We'll just wait for your father to get home. And that was, hey. I should have just let her hit me with the bat once. The wiffle ball bat on the bum and been done because it'd be like getting hit with a piece of paper. And I was like, oh shit. So my dad would come home and he would just talk to me and I'd be like, okay, good. But I would remember not to do it again. But, and that's part of the issue today. It's like, you know, I look back at that stuff. There wasn't abuse. I, there no. were good times. And I learned from every experience. And it was very like, okay, today, if, if someone says, you know, you smack your kid on the bum, oh, we have to call the police. I'm like, you know what? Call the cops. Take the kid. I don't care. I'll make another. Like, leave me alone. You know, it's like, give me a break. And that's the problem. They don't let parents be parents anymore. If that's the case, listen, just breed. Give the kid to a robot. And we'll see I, you when you're 25. I'm saying this. I'm saying this, though. I think being a yeah. parent is hard. And it does require yes. it requires yes. training. And it yep. requires you to become something else. Something yes. better than yes. yourself. And I'm, yes. I'm saying, I'm saying there is zero support for that. There is yeah. zero training, zero guidance. And if yeah. you're going to follow your parents' example, unless you've got the world's greatest parents, you're going to do. You're either going to do exactly what they've done, which is not right. going to be great, or you'll do the opposite, which might not be great either. Right. So you, it, it's tough. You need information. You need, you need training. You don't right. just get behind the wheel of a car and drive it. You need training. Well, some people just get behind the wheel of a car. But listen quickly before I forget this joke. You mentioned, yeah. the Falkland, you mentioned the Falkland Islands. Yeah. The yeah. Falkland Islands, yes, the which Falkland. is in the South uh, Atlantic, by the way, people, yeah. not, not the Falkland Islands. So, <laughs> um, so here it is. Um, the UK goes, the UK and Argentina. So the UK goes, um, knock, knock. Who's there? Argentina. Yeah. Okay. So you Argentina, right? Sure. And I'm the, and I'm the UK. Here we go. Well, so I'm the UK yeah. and I go, knock, knock. Who's there? Falkland Islands. Falkland Islands, who? And you never will. <laughs> That's good. I like that.
Yeah. So, but you know what was really sad about the Falkland Islands? I know we have to go in a couple minutes, but here's what's sad about the Falkland Island, the whole thing. Not my friend that didn't know the difference between the Falkland Islands and the Falkland Islands, but is that when the British sent there, it's that's a true story, which is horrible. Um, it, it the but the part that really got me was when they left to go to the Falkland Islands. They may it took them two weeks. When they got there, the Argentinian government act like it was a surprise, like they didn't know, like oh, they're here, they're invading us. I'm sorry, it's been on every news channel. For the last 14 yeah. days, and you're yeah. telling me you don't know that they're here. It feels like, yeah. bless you. I was like, guys, the don't like seriously. No, you should lose the islands. So you know, what can I tell yeah. you? For all you what people that live in the Falkland Hawaiian Islands, you don't have to worry. So <laughs> I just that was one of the best things ever. The Falkland Islands, and they said that's why people from Brooklyn have a problem. So. Uh, in, in a related story, that there we've actually got the uh, totally left field, right field, yeah. or whatever. Whatever we've field. got the we've got the Argentinian rugby team here taking nice. on the Springboks this Saturday. Okay. Yeah, right. um, Los Pumas taking on the Springboks, so they're actually yeah. in town. Their name um, is Los Pumas. Los Los Pumas. Los Pumas. Wow. It sounds like, Pumas, it sounds like I Pumas. Had something that didn't agree with me. I got a little Los Pumas here. So hey, they've got great beef. Argentina has got Argent oh, they Argentina. do. They have yeah. great beef. So they're the having a great time because we got great beef too. So they're at home. Well, they're having... Get rid of those 10 year old kids. It's always good. That's, uh, that's how you do it. Wow. <laughs> Why? All right. Wow. We, just drink we just drink you know your what? blood. Stop Steve, <laughs> Steve, <laughs> Steve, you know what never gets old? What? Dark humor and unvaccinated kids. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Since you brought it up, you went dark. I had to go dark too. Yeah, I'm just saying. That's our I'm show. Yeah. Hey, but the good yeah. thing is, You'll I'll use that on my radio show. Yeah, no, you can't do that. You'll get kicked off. Oh, you can use it. Yeah, no, here, here, here we're good. Oh, one um, more, quickly. One more, yeah, yeah. one more. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. One yeah. more, one more. So this is a true story. Sure. Prince Harry, Prince Harry is in the UK right now attending some benefit. Sure. And there was they were thinking perhaps he would um, you know, he would he would hook up with um William and Charles. Okay. Okay. So he went to a dinner and he walked in and he said, um, Hey, um, Will, where's dad? Right. So William turns around and says to him, um, he wasn't invited, but my father's dancing with Camilla. Oh, very nice. Nice, nice. Wow. Yeah, because there is a little controversy on uh, who his daddy is. So nice. I, think I explain so. that for the Americans that are listening because they don't have a clue. They're going to be like, first of all, they don't even know who prince harry or william is so we have to help them out so that was they're like ladies spare guys. Yeah. think spare think stephen colbert think spare that's He's prince harry there you go oh, the book I love it. Yeah. so next are you going to be back next thursday with your words of wisdom wisdom well i'll be back with words okay <laughs> back with words. that's what we, we I don't, words. just to be clear we, yeah. we we've started all these philosophies and all kinds of yeah. garbage has come out of my mouth sure i'm in no way saying they're wise or they even matter. But after just, the show, he'll tell me how just, wise I, they are and they do matter. So just so of course, of course. So, but so. right now, okay. Yeah. Yes. And as we started with the beginning of the show, we're going to end the same way. Yes, it's true. The Jews have space lasers. We do need. We do own all the media and all the banks. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's and and what about the flat Earth thing? Is that that's not oh, a Jewish that's, thing? Oh, uh, that's the Gentile. Is that not, that's a Gentile. Is that a Gentile? Thing? Yeah, yeah, so we, the, don't, uh, the, we don't do that. So the Jews, it's it's a well, the Jews, it's a ball, is it? Is it's it still a ball. Yeah, it's a real ball because we own the ball. We don't own the flat stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't do. Oh, that. What are you going to do with the flat thing? It's got to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I got it. Like I said on the cigar show last week, I said, listen, Cuba. When we get our Cuban cigars, it's only ninety miles away from Miami, but if you walk it, it's a little further. Yeah, it's the same thing. So there you have it. Now that's uh, one of those. That's 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 <laughs> Everybody, it was good to see you live. This will be yes. rebroadcasted on Sunday morning. We'll be back next Thursday live. If you have a topic you want us to touch on, feel free to tell us. I mean, we won't, but feel free to tell us. And uh, we'll go from there. Oh, stop it. You know we love our fan. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see you we'll see <laughs> next week. Try not to throw up. <laughs> I'm going to go do that right now. All right. Cheers, everybody. Have a great day. 
thank you so much for listening to this Harold Woods, Rob Vega, whatever the hell he wants to call himself, fellow. You know, this this podcast thing, it, it makes him feel very important and he's a difficult fellow as it is to deal with. So thank you so much for putting up with him and, and do take care.